Man, it feels so good to finally be back in Japan. It's been three years since I was last here, obviously because of COVID and everything that's gone on in the world during that period, but we're finally back. We're here to run a couple of tours for the Kokofu 10, and I've actually got a little bit of time to be in the city of Kyoto before we start those tours. So I thought it'd be really cool in this episode to bring you to a brand new public bonsai garden and display in the north part of the city here at a temple called Dai Tokuji. So we're gonna head into one of the sub temples called Hoshunin and check out the trees on display. So this sub temple that we're gonna go check out here is actually one that I'm pretty familiar with. One of our good customers at Fujikawa-san's nursery, Mr. Yanai, actually hosted a one-man exhibition here years and years ago. It must have been probably 2015 or 2016 when he did that. So Fujikawa-san brought all the apprentices up to check it out. And of course, Mr. Yanai had some of the most amazing trees in all of the Kansai area of Japan. So I'm really excited to see what the setup looks like here. I've seen photos of it online and I know they redid the inside of the temple grounds to make it more bonsai centric. So let's head into the sub temple of Hoshinin and actually check out the trees. So this is by far one of the most impressive public collections that I've ever seen, hands down, anywhere in the world. There are some trees on display here that are very famous, that have been in the Kokofu multiple times. As a matter of fact, I believe there are a few trees in here that have actually won Kokofu awards. So it's a very special place to be. The layout is incredible. Obviously the temple complex here adds a beautiful atmosphere and you can actually see Mount Hie or Hiezon up in the northeast corner of the city from here. It's just like a perfect backdrop for all of these trees. So I'm really excited. We're actually gonna be bringing both of our upcoming tours to visit this garden. And I think everyone's gonna be blown away by what they see here.
You know, it's kind of wild being back in Japan after all this time away. I mean, pretty much everything stayed the same. All the same restaurants are still here. Nothing shut down. The buses still operate the same way. The gardens are just as beautiful, but I don't know, it feels different being back this time, having been gone for so long. So to actually come back and see bonsai like that in person again, it's inspiring. You know, I was going through like withdrawals basically, not being able to see that great material in person. So I feel ready to rock and roll and actually go make some trees, but I'm gonna be here for a little while. So it's gonna be a while before I can actually get my hands on some plants again. But again, really cool to see that stuff in person. So within this Daitokuji temple complex there are actually a couple of dozen sub temples, some of which actually have very famous gardens. And a lot of these are actually what are called kare sansui or dry landscape gardens, what we might refer to in the West as Zen gardens. But uh, some of the most famous ones here would be like Daisein, for example, and Zuihoin. Now Daisein won't let you take videos or photos, but we're gonna head over to Zuihoin and check it out. And perhaps they'll let us take some video there so I can show you exactly what this garden looks like. It was actually designed relatively recently by a very famous garden designer named Shigemori Mire, who was much more in tune with kind of modern Japanese aesthetics and modern art, and he would combine kind of old school gardens with more modern interpretations of what a garden should be. So quite interesting in how he combined all of these elements to build some very famous gardens in Japan. So let's head over to Zuihoin and check it out and see if they'll let us film. Shigemori Mire is very famous for building gardens that were quite loud in relation to traditional Japanese gardens. So you can see here that there are a lot of very large upright stones and the gravel is raked into very heavy waves or representation of very heavy waves where typically you might see the gravel kind of raked to create kind of a ripple effect. Here the gravel is actually mounded up to create the sense of kind of chaos in the Kare Sansui garden here. So quite interesting, very different and a very unique take on Japanese gardens. Now, this particular sub-temple was actually built in 1535 by a daimyo or a lord from Kyushu who eventually converted to Christianity. So when Shigemori Mide decided to design the garden on the back half of the garden, he actually laid out the stones in the shape of a crucifix to sort of represent the conversion to Christianity by this particular daimyo. So unless you know this coming into the garden, it's very difficult to see the cross shape, but it's quite interesting to actually see it in person. So check this out, right out in front of Zuihoin, we've got some cryptomeria here that are formed in the shape of what's called Daisugi. But you can see that one of the trunks is actually rotted out and they've backfilled it with concrete. So not only do we do this in bonsai to heal wounds, but you'll see this actually done with larger trees in the landscape. And this is to prevent further rot and decay. All right guys, thanks for checking out this episode here on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed seeing some bonsai in Japan again and checking out one of the most famous and beautiful temples in all of Kyoto city. So we'll be doing some more updates while we're here in Japan over the next few weeks. So definitely come back and check that out. But until then, take care.